Welcome to the Pet Loss Companion. I'm Ken Dolan Del Vecchio. I'm here with my friend and co-author, Nancy Saxton Lopez. And this is a program that we do live every Thursday from 6 p.m. Eastern to about 6.30. And it is a an outgrowth, you might say, of the book that we wrote a few years back. It's called The Pet Loss Companion, Healing Advice from Family Therapists Who Lead Pet Loss Groups. And that book is based on lots and lots of experience facilitating pet loss groups. So 30 plus years for Nancy and 14 or so years for me, and we're still going strong. strong. (laughs) And this medium allows us to reach a bigger audience still and to dialogue with you. And we dialogue with you mostly through the exchange of emails and sometimes messages while we're doing the program. And we like very much to hear from you. We, a lot of what we do during our broadcast is we read stories from people who have written to us and shared their stories. And we know that this provides a lot of solace to the audience members who are listening. So feel free to send us your story. If you do, please let us know if it's okay to share it. And if it's not okay, we're going to still try to get back to you. We're getting a large volume. And so we may not be able to get back to everybody but we will we'll try. We'll definitely and try. Yes, we'll try. we know how important it is for you to, you know, talk about this this yeah. wonderful relationship and the loss that you've experienced. So we we try to get back via email to everyone, uh, but in any case, if you let us know whether we can share it mm-hmm. or not, that will let us know whether or not it's okay for us to use it as part of this broadcast. You can reach me at kenddv at gmail dot com. And you can reach Nancy at N Saxton Lopez at CSMPC.com. And that's N S A X T O N L O P E Z at CSMPC.com. All of the information I'm sharing in this intro is also in the description that falls underneath the either the broadcast video or audio, depending on how you how you access the program. Also, don't hesitate to send us a recommendation for topics or guess we've we've benefited greatly from both from being suggested a topic to cover and also by having a guest suggested to us a number of whom we've had as we've had on the show so you can support our work in a number of different ways you can go get in, you can send us a donation through venmo or paypal or monthly subscription we certainly are appreciate all of that but we don't expect you to do that we're very right. grateful if you do but we know that that's not something that everybody who listens can do this program is a friend of dakin humane society which is based in springfield massachusetts and for more on dakin see the program description or go to dot org. dakin one of the programs that they sponsor is a cost-free zoom pet loss group that I facilitate. It's once a month. It's usually on the second Tuesday of the month. It runs 6 p.m. to 7.30, and it is cost-free. You don't have to pay anything to participate. And we have had people participating from all across the country, all over the world. All over the world. Very, very interesting and helpful, the experience of being in the meeting people share with each other. You can get the RSVP link to the program by going to Dakin Humane and then to the program tab and more specifically to Pet Law Support. Again, the the link is part of the description to this program. And the next group is May 9th. And you're welcome to join us. I look forward Mm -hmm. to having you there if it fits your schedule and your needs. Please consider subscribing on YouTube. If you subscribe on YouTube, it makes the algorithm tell other people about this program as a resource for support at a higher level on the list of resources that are shown. So if you find this program helpful, please consider subscribing because it'll help other people find the program. And with that, Nancy, I guess you'll get us. Well, we love Susan because Susan actually wrote to us (laughs) after her little hamster died and said, Hey, why don't you talk about other types of companion animals, right? Right. And so that's what we're doing tonight. Yep. Um, we have two. And Ken, I think you are going to start with Susan. Yep. yep. So Susan wrote, I, 
I recently started listening to the Pat Loss Companion podcast because my hamster was recently diagnosed with cancer. Mm. Cancer. I haven't listened to all the episodes, so apologies if this has been done, but I would love an episode about losing a pet that isn't a dog or a cat, such as a reptile, hamster, guinea pig, mm -hmm. fish, et cetera. I think sometimes people with non-traditional pets aren't taken as seriously in their pet care and pet loss grief as people with dogs and cats. And this can be difficult to deal with when your beloved pet is dying or recently died. Especially hamsters and fish are sometimes considered disposable pets, unfortunately, due to their short lifespan. So you aren't supposed to be sad when they die. And she puts that in parentheses, both disposable and aren't supposed to be sad. I would love to hear a discussion about this. Thanks, Susan. And then shortly thereafter, Susan wrote to us again. And I, I let her know that this is a great suggestion. And while we've mm -hmm. talked, we've sprinkled- We have had rabbits. There. Yeah, we've had then, rabbits, I believe, some time ago. Yeah, um, we but and we don't get a lot of those stories, right? But now we are, we're starting yeah. to get them. Somehow it's interesting. We just we just got at least two more yeah. in rapid succession right after Susan's note. So Susan also wrote more recently, just wanted to give an update that we had to put my hamster banjo down on Monday. He was given painkillers when we arrived at the emergency vet and was therefore able to enjoy his last few minutes before they began the euthanasia process. That process thankfully went smoothly and peacefully, although I chose not to watch the second injection as it mm -hmm. must be injected directly into an organ for pets this small. An mm -hmm. IV catheter is unrealistic for a small rodent. And then she said, this picture was taken as he was falling asleep after being given the sedative. So here's a picture of what a, a little uh, banjo. Very, very That's cute. Sweet. And such a sad, sad yeah, thing. Boy. And, and Susan raises such an important mm -hmm. point that it doesn't matter what size or what the lifespan mm -hmm. is of our animal companions. They are huge in our hearts mm -hmm. and they are a very big part of our lives and they, they leave a huge, a huge void when we lose them. And yeah. so it's very important for people to understand that it doesn't have to be a dog or a cat or... Mm -hmm or a horse or any particular animal. It, it can be whatever animal this individual has developed a very loving and close connection with. Hey, I mean, even fish. I mean, I remember having a fish some years back and I had little angel fish and they got to be very big mm -hmm. fish. Mm -hmm. And even though you can't touch them, I loved watching all the fish in my tank. And then one day the heater went and I remember those two, those two angel fishes kissing as they died. And that was, it was so heartbreaking, even though it was my fish, you know, yeah. it's yeah. not something that I could pet or kiss, but yeah. you know, they were part of our family, all those little fish. And in the years that we did the group in New Jersey, we had people come and talk mm -hmm. about their fish mm -hmm. with some regularity. So Again, you can't necessarily touch yeah. them, but they're a constant presence in our lives. I was at a location yesterday where there was a very large koi pond, and wow. those fish are definitely personalities, and I'm sure they mean a, a lot, lot to the people, people who care for them. And they also are such a constant mm -hmm. presence in their lives that you imagine that they are very, very significant relationships. And so we never want to minimize no. any of them. It's very interesting what Susan said about disposable, like none, yeah. none of our animal companions, no. nobody mm -hmm. should consider them disposable. They're meaning, they're very meaningful relationships in the lives of, of many. I, I had a, well, I had a chinchilla when I was in college and after I was in college that chinchilla lived with us for quite a while. I had rabbits. I had rabbits until just a few years ago, actually. And they lived to be nine. And mm -hmm. they were two brothers, the, big Belgium rat, yeah. rabbits, right? Weren't yeah, they? they were Flemish giants. Fla Flemish, Flemish giants. giants. And uh, they, they, they were very important to me. And they, they were, they had a really nice indoor outdoor setup. <laughs> and uh, they were brothers. They couldn't actually be together. They had to be separated by a kennel fence because they were they would fight. 
but they sometimes would nuzzle each other and, and they were very they were very pleasant to me i would take care of them and i had a rat when i was in yeah. college who was who was a great friend he would sit on my shoulder i'd carry him around and when i had him he, he got pneumonia after about wow. two years old as susan said a lot of these animals don't live very they don't have very long yeah, life mm-hmm. and i i was at cornell and i took him to the vet the vet college clinic and very much like what what Susan said, they the the student who was going to anest, was going to euthanize him wanted to take him in a different room and do it. And I knew many people who were in veterinary school. I was studying to be either pre vet or in one of the psychology fields at the time. I couldn't decide yet, and I knew that they often they often ended the rats lives by simply hitting them on the table and so i insisted that the student because he kept saying you know it's not very pleasant i i don't know if you want to be here for this and and i said i do want to be here for this Mm -hmm. largely because i wanted to make sure that he gave him an injection that it wasn't a violent death and so ultimately he he i told him you can you can take him in the other room, but you have to promise me that you're going to give him an injection and you're not going to whack him on the table. And I think I offended him. And he, hey. he went in the other room. He got the needle. He came in and he he euthanized Nero, my rat, and he didn't say another word to me. Hey, listen, that was You got to do what you got to do to protect your best friends. That's right. <laughs> And also, I, I had a mouse, Larry, that was that was uh, rescued from one of the pharmaceutical companies here, mm-hmm. testing them, you know. Um, but I also had two cockatiels, um, and you Ken. One of those, one of them was yours, <laughs> yes, <laughs> Henry. Okay, <laughs> but that leads us into our next yeah. story, which is but, from but, Valerie. And let's um, thank Susan. Thank you so much. Oh Susan, yes, Susan, for both thank you sharing so much. Uh, sharing Banjo's story. Banjo is the name of the of the hamster, and also for making the recommendation because yes. we immediately said, you know, this is a really good point. Yeah. Let's make sure that we follow up with this quickly. That's excellent. So thank you. Thank you, Susan. So I'm going to read Valerie's story, and this is about her cockatoo. Um, I've started, erased, and started over this email so many times already. I knew it was going to be tough to write, but if somewhere one day it can help someone, it's well worth it. First off, I'd like to say thank you from the bottom of my heart for your podcast. About a month ago, I started searching for support on pet loss. I found your podcast, and it helped me a great deal. It's actually still helping me. My grieving journey is very fresh, but I'm getting through it one day at a time. I'll try not to make this too long, but it is actual lifelong story that started when I was seven and now I'm 38. My grandfather was a farmer and a hobby breeder in Ontario, Canada. He had a passion for parrots, plants, and everything beautiful. That's what his home and life was all about. That farm in the Holland Marsh was my happy place. Every second I could spend with my grandparents, I did. As an only child, it got pretty lonely sometimes. When I was seven, my mom became ill. My dad was not home very much, always working, because at that time, my mom couldn't. With my dad being gone, most of the time, I was left to care for my mom. We didn't leave the house much. Grocery school and grandpa's house was pretty much all we did. On Saturday, we walked into grandpa's house, and in the kitchen was a big glass fish tank with a blanket on the bottom and a bald little bird with black eyes and gigantic black beaks sitting on the blanket looking up at me. I was excited. I remember saying to grandpa, oh, you have another baby. My grandfather's response was, no, Val, she's your baby. I vaguely remember becoming teary-eyed and thinking this bird is going to be my new best friend. My grandpa saw my sadness during that time. It was lonely. Later in life, he told me he thought I needed a friend. That's why he gave her to me. My mom and I thought about a name. My mom always loved Lucille Ball. Watching all the HS tapes of I Love Lucy reruns was something we did quite often when she was sick. So, of course, we named her Lucy. 
We hand fed her just like a newborn every few hours. My mom taking over duties while I was at school and through the night when I was sleeping. Taking care of this little bird was exactly what my mom and I both needed at that time in our lives. Lucy helped my mom get better and she quickly became the best friend I needed at that young age. Lucy became quite the entertainer. She was a large umbrella cockatoo that demanded to be the center of attention always. She was fussy with her food, hated a mess in her cage, and if you weren't talking to her, she would definitely make it known, loudly, that she wanted your attention. She was the center of our small family, the sister I never had. She was always included in our family portraits and even a part of a few family Halloween costumes. Everyone that visited fell in love with her. My teachers even let me bring her to school over the years. As time went on, I was in my last year of high school heading to college in the fall. My mom's and dad's marriage had slowly been falling apart, and my mom eventually moved out. My dad became very lonely and turned to work once again. He took a job in the Northwest Territories for the winter and left me, Lucy, and Rocky, our family dog, while he tried to feel better himself. Once again, it was me and Lucy. She was my responsibility. I needed to take care of her while she took care of me. My dad returned and I left for college. It was now my dad and Lucy taking care of each other. Every time I would come home from school, our life was back to normal like I wasn't even gone. Lucy and I had an unbreakable bond. While I was in college, I met the person I would later marry and have children with. After we finished college, I decided to move with him because I enjoyed the quiet, small-town life of where he was from, but 24 hours from my home and Lucy. Lucy stayed with my dad for a few years, and eventually she moved to my grandfather's beautiful oasis because my dad was working and not spending enough time with her. Still, every time I visited, it was like we were never apart. My grandpa used to say, nothing will ever come between you and that bird. A few years later, I had my own two boys who are five and three. We moved to an old farmhouse in the country, and I asked my dad and grandpa if I could move Lucy in with us. It was time I had my best friend back. They agreed, so we made the 25-hour trip to pick her up, and I brought her home with me. My two boys grew up with that same parrot that I grew up with. She was still the center of attention, the center of our family. I used to joke that I loved her more than my kids. Lucy was there for me when my marriage broke. She was there for me when my grandfather left us. She was there for me my entire life through the good and the bad. But a month and a half ago, my oldest son, who also became very attached to her, had noticed a little prolapse on her bottom. I chalked it up to her laying an egg and figured it would get better. It didn't get better. I consulted, consulted with exotic veterinarians. I did all the homework and research. It was suggested to me from the professionals to put her down because the chances of her surviving surgery was slim and the chances of the surgery working were slimmer. Her clo cloacal, I guess, prolapse could, would get Thank you. Prolapse would get worse. And I didn't want my best friend to suffer. And this is where it gets tough. After discussing things with my mom and dad, my boyfriend and my two kids, I had to make the hardest decision of my life. Lucy was mostly normal. She was still eating and acting goofy, maybe less goofy. I could see she was getting tired. Through my tears and heartache, I asked the vet when I should make the call. She said sooner than later. I made the appointment for March 13th, 2023. We spent the last five days of her life spoiling her with her favorite treats, letting her roam wherever she would like and loving her extra. It was hard for me to wrap my head around the thought of losing this bird that had been my entire life. I spent hours cuddling her and whispering messages to her to maybe pass on to the, pe to, uh, the people I hoped will be there greeting her wherever that may be. I asked her to come back to me as something because I didn't know if I could do life without her. That Monday, I sat in the back seat with Lucy as we made the final trip to the vet. My best friend for the last 32 years of my life was going to leave me. Lucy passed away, cuddled in my arms. I can honestly say losing her has been the worst than that has been worse than losing a family member. 
Oh, how well we know that. Uh, here I am today doing life without her. It's hard. It comes and goes. Some days are better than others. Sometimes it's minute by minute. I must say, I couldn't ask for a better support system. It's small, but they help me get through every day. Like I said, my grief journey is fresh and just beginning, but I'm doing it. There's a part of her that will never leave me. I love Lucy forever and ever. Thank you both once again for making pet loss grief a real thing and helping people like me. The days are getting better, but I still think about her constantly. It's weird, but random white feathers have appeared right in front of me a few times since in the most unusual places. I know she's with me. Slowly but surely, I'm creating things that give me peace about it all. My oldest son had a beautiful custom-made sign made for me. We hung it where her cage was. I'm getting better. I can sometimes look at it without crying. So things are looking up. LOL. Once again, thank you, and please share my story. If it can help anyone, it's worth it. The pain sucks, but it does get better, even after 32 years. What a beautiful story. Yeah. Thank wow. you, Valerie. Yeah, thanks so much, Valerie. That's, I mean, talk about the bond that we oh. have with our companion animals and how this this bird was part of the family for yeah. us and, and had relationships with all of the family members, it sounds like. That's and right. Lived with a lot of its life in the same home with Valerie, but not always. Part of the time she no. was with other people and with grandpa, with dad, that. with mom, yeah. right? Yeah. And also, I loved it what she said. She was a sister I never had, right? Yeah. <laughs> right. And, and that decision sounds like it was yeah, it's really hard. something that was really, really hard. And she talked to the right mm -hmm. people and she and her family members talked it through. And it sounds like they gave her a very nice last few days and then. And then a really warm send off. Right. And wow, but what a story. And 32, 32 years, years from the time she was seven years old, when she right. took she took care of her as an as an infant bird, as an infant right. baby bird. Wow. What a, it was it, it's such a touching story. And it, it and like you said, it it talks to the amazing relationship mm -hmm. we have with our animals. I know this is a bird, an avian, I believe, but it's still, I mean, it's still somebody that we love so much and loves us back. And mm -hmm. you can't get that kind of relationship with a human being. It just doesn't happen that way. Yeah. Yeah. And we talk about that a lot. Um, and I know it was a hard decision for her to make, yeah. but it sounds like it was, a, it was the, what was going on with Lucy was really problematic. Yeah, well, it sounds like they were very deliberate about making the decision to end her suffering. And one of the thing, one of the key elements here, I think, is how long this relationship was. It was all of her, her life. I mean, all of her life, except for the very first few years of her childhood. Right. And so, and then to have to make the decision I know. to to end her suffering, to end her, yeah. her, her pain is just, wow, that's something that's really, it sounds like she's managing it very, very well. Yes. I do believe that's the case. And I'm glad that she has seen some feathers. Yeah. <laughs> I'm glad that she knows Lucy's there. Yeah. She's around. We all know that we, well, at least we believe um, <laughs> that the spirits are still with us and they give little signs. Mm-hmm. I like that her son, you know, bought this beautiful picture. I think it was, I think a sign that was really nice and put where her cage had been. Um, and it's just, it's that longevity, right? Of love. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. That is, it's so special. There was a, I worked at a pet store when I was in college. So I worked at a pet store in Ithaca. It was called Pampered Pets. And the last time I went there was, was a few years ago. It was still there. And there was this enormous blue macaw mm -hmm. who was there at the time when I was there, which was now 40 plus years ago. 
And when I went just a few years back, he was still there. Oh my goodness. <laughs> and he's the, the owner said he, he'll still recognize you. So I talked to him. <laughs> that is so cool. <laughs> so, I mean, they, they have amazing longevity parrots do and cockatoos and all these large Pet and that was why this is kind of sad, I think, because, you know, for Valerie, I think, you know, because of what was going on with Lucy, unfortunately. Yes. And of course, they get illnesses that shorten their yeah. lifespans, as do human beings and all yeah. kinds of all kinds of animal companions. And so you might be expecting that you're going to have your cockatoo or your macaw, your parrot with you for many more decades even. Mm -hmm. But you never know what's going to happen. Life comes at you with these, these, you know, terrible, unexpected issues sometimes. Yeah. And her kids were knew the yeah. knew Lucy their whole lives. That's right. I mean, it's, it's always to me, it's always bittersweet. Because when you think about what a gift it is to have that kind of connection. Yeah. And, you know, you can't help, I can't help but feel grateful for them that they had, mm -hmm. they had yeah. that. And, and it's, you know, of course it's, it's, there's a, there's a whole process of grieving that they have to go through and it is very fresh, right. but what it's a, just, what a joy yeah. that they had that connection. And, and I'm sure they'll, they'll hold on to that for the very long term. I'm sure that, I'm sure that Lucy is in their hearts yep. and yep. I'm sure that she's spiritually around. Yeah, yeah, and will be forever. And also banjo, and you could see yeah, that. Yes, banjo's there too. Very sweet little Susan, fellow. Susan, banjo's there. <laughs> you know. Who meant the world to her? And of course, you know, it's there's nothing like having an animal companion of any size or species, right? Because species, they right. they they give us so much, and mm -hmm. they mean so much to us. And it's very, very, it can be very, very difficult when we lose hey, them. Hey, Ken, you and I, we buried Henry together, right? Yep, yep. Henry the cockatiel. Yep. Yep. And so I, I can, I guess for some reason I took him because you were ha you couldn't have him for a while or something. What oh, was or that? he wasn't, we knew that, I think that your cockatiel Tweety. Had laid an egg, Tweety, and it seemed like it would, they would be they would be more companion if they were together. And so, yeah, so we, so you took both. Of them. I took Henry, <laughs> and then unfortunately Henry died. Um, and I won't go into that story, but Henry died um, tragically. And you and I met together at Madison Vet. I think it was right. Yeah. I don't remember. We were together at some at some point, and we buried little Henry. And then I got another Henry and I had, of course, I had to name him Henry too. So to keep Tweety, who was still. Well, my, my son tells me that uh, I name all of my male animals, Henry, Henry, which I, it's an old family name actually. So there's a lot of Henry's in the history. And of course, one of my first chickens was named Henrietta because I didn't of have course. a male animal at that time. <laughs> Henry the horse, Henry the cat. Henry the horse, Henry the cat. Yes. Henry the bird. <laughs> There'll be more Henrys for sure. I know there will be. <laughs> and that's fine. So well, anyway, Valerie, Nancy, always a pleasure. As, yes. As Valerie and, and Susan, thank you so yep. much. Thanks so much and, for, sharing um, for sharing. And yes, you know, we will meet again next week. And, yep. and yep. we hope everyone has, you know, a good week. Yep. Take care, everyone. <laughs>